This is an Arduino Uno and um, I did quite a few projects with these before I realised that you can actually get these which are quite a lot cheaper. This is a blue pill so this has got an ARM processor on it instead of an AT Mega and um, it's considerably faster it's got more GPIOs, it's got more RAM, it's got more flash it's um, got, for me, a better programming method which is um, using an ST-Link dongle which is attached here with the SWD um, programming it's got a 40-pin DIP package which is really nice because the Uno's got a strange footprint for shields um, which makes it a bit of a pain putting it on VeraBoard whereas this you can put straight down onto VeraBoard and uh, that was great. I also used um, these early on. So this is an STM32F103 blue pill board and this is a, I don't know if it's still a blue pill, but it's an STF030 board and it's got less flash, less RAM and so on and it's um, slower so in the end I didn't use these for a lot. I've still got them hanging around for something when I need something small and quick but I tended to use these quite a lot. Some of them have 128k of flash, but all the ones that I bought have only got 64k, so <laughs> I was unlucky there. Now, that's fine, and um, I did start taking the chip off and putting the chip directly onto um, PCBs, rather than using a blue pill. That has got pros and cons. Obviously, if you blow up the blue pill, it's a lot easier cutting this off and putting another one on than it is desolder in that chip, at least if you haven't got a hot air gun. Um, but for me I do have a hot air gun and I've actually, because I've had supply problems with these chips, I've actually taken these chips off these boards and put them on my own PCBs because I can't get hold of the chips anymore. The lead time for these um, chips is now um, up around a year, so they're basically just unobtainable at the moment. The blue pills, I haven't bought any recently, mainly used chips on a lot of the recent projects I've done but um, I assume they're getting harder to to get hold of as well but anyway turns out recently I found out about this now this is a um, Raspberry Pi Pico and you can see it's the same sort of form factor there's a definite similarity there again it's a 40 pin pin out, although unfortunately I found that the three pins down here, which is the programming connections, just like it is on the blue pill, aren't actually lined up on a 0.1 inch grid, which is a bit of a pain if you want to put it on VeraBoard, or something with a 0.1 inch pitch, but you can sort of jiggle things around and manage to do it, but um, yeah, a bit of a shame that, but anyway, um, this a lot more flash there's two mega flash in an external uh, SBI device so that's um, different to the STM32 the flash there is in the chip here it's external so you can change it to whatever you want really um, downside the package of the chip not quite as nice to solder it's um, not a quad flat pack it's some sort of UFN package with no legs, so you've got to get in there and solder underneath it or use hot air or something. And I did buy some ICs as well, so I've got some ICs if I want to put those down, but uh, they are a bit of a pain to, to solder. And this uh, module is designed, it's got castellated pins on the outside, it's designed that you can solder it flat on the board. You wouldn't need headers. So uh, that's a bit different to the uh, blue pill. It's not really designed to be soldered into a PCB as a module, whereas the uh, Pico is. It's got a lot more RAM as well. This has got 20k of RAM, and this has got something like 235k of RAM, which is a lot more. It's faster. This runs at 72 or maybe 36 meg. It's difficult to tell sometimes. Um, this runs at something like 125, 130 meg, so it's faster, more flash, more RAM, better footprint. Everything's good really, and it's it's a bit more expensive than a really cheap blue pill, but not a lot. These are 
I, I was getting these at sort of two or three pounds. This is about four. So eh, maybe approximately twice the price, but well over twice the uh, performance. So being an ARM processor, this is dual core. There's two processors in that uh, little black blob. Only one here. Um, being dual core that caused a bit of a problem and it turns out you can't program it with an ST-Link dongle so uh, that was out. What you can do though is you can actually build a programmer out of a Raspberry Pi Pico so you can make your own dongle obviously for four pounds which is sort of about the same as an ST-Link um, programmer and um, that gives you the option of using the SWD interface to program. Now, obviously you've got two boards then, so I just made this up, which is a um, it's a double programming setup. So this Raspberry Pi Pico here is set up as what's called a Pico probe, and that is the equivalent of an ST-Link dongle. So this Raspberry Pi is programming this one using the SWD links. And they're all wired. They're all wired underneath. So you attach your programming USB here, and this is USB for USB to serial coming out of this um, Pico here. And um, at the moment, I'm using OpenOCD to program it. So it's a different programmer. It's the uh, STM32 or the ST Cube programmer is what I use with the ST Link. But with this, it's OpenOCD using this Pico as the uh, hardware programmer. And um, I'm using, for the actual sort of day-to-day -day workflow, I'm using Eclipse. Now, Eclipse has got another advantage over... Well, it hasn't actually. You, you, you can use um, debug. You can do source-level debug using Eclipse on Blue Pill. I've done that in the past but I haven't done it with the Arduino IDE, so I've used Arduino and um, bare metal on the blue pill. And the bare metal is, if you do it with Eclipse, you end up with um, sort of free source level debug over the SWD. Um, the Arduino IDE, you probably can do it, but I've never done that, and it's not really built in. The nice thing about the Arduino IDE is everything is there, you basically just load it up, plug the Arduino in and it programs. With the Eclipse, OCD, Pico and Blue Pill, there's a lot more setup involved really. And also on the um, these Raspberry Pi Picos, I'm actually running those using the Raspberry Pi SDK, not, not using the Arduino uh, IDE. Now that's sort of nice in that I get the Eclipse and source level debug built in but there's a lot more setup and there seem to be a lot less uh, libraries so uh, the advantage with the Arduino IDE and you can run that apparently I haven't done it yet I may not do it I might do it you can run the Arduino IDE on the uh, Pico but um, remains to be seen how well that works I'm, I'll, I might give it a go but at the moment I'm more interested in just using the bare metal stuff and uh, what I've got here is just a simple test program which is flashing a couple of LEDs down here. These, I mean, One of them is flashing the same as the built-in LED but it's actually a different GPIO and um, this is just to get something up and running. And one of the perif peripherals that I use quite a lot are these small OLED displays and it turns out that um, <laughs> On the uh, Arduino IDE you can just go and get a library, there's quite a few of them that drive these things and you just drive it and everything's fine. This one I've had to effectively write from scratch because I couldn't find one for the Pico. Not an easy one that was easy to install. But it turns out that I've got an old project which used an ARM chip um, and that's the um, sort of digital DRO that I did. Um, it's on GitHub, and part of that is an I squared C and an OLED, a couple of functions that drive the OLED display over I squared C. So I just ported that over, just copied it over basically, and um, set up 
that the DRO can run, um, I think it runs something like six or eight I squared C buses because it's got three of these displays and three uh, sensor uh, processors that it talks to. So I just took that bit out and it's now just talking over a couple of GPIOs. So this is bit banged. It's not using uh, the hardware I squared C. You could do if you wanted to, but it's quicker just to bit bang it. And uh, it's working. And uh, I mean, that's one of my main peripherals. The other one's SD card, which I haven't got working at the moment. There is a library for the Pico for that, but unfortunately the pinout was different to what I've got here and it didn't work, so I need to do some fiddling around to try and get that working. For the moment it looks quite good. The um, fact that you can solder this down onto the board and the fact that the footprint's a little bit iffy means that I may actually put picos on where I can rather than uh, using the chip. With the blue pill it's, it's just a bigger package and um, I just started putting chips down because they're smaller and neater and there's a lot of things I don't need on here. I don't need the jumpers. Um, don't need two crystals. If I haven't got a real-time clock and the real-time clock isn't the one in here, that's not the one I'd use because it doesn't have, <laughs> doesn't have hardware calendar registers on this particular device. I think there's a hardware real-time clock in the um, RP2040, which is the... Uh, the chip that the Pico uses. Now that's the clever part. The uh, RP2040, or whatever it's called. It's um, it's basically very similar to the STM32103, um, but the thing that I was quite interested in at first was the fact that it's got uh, these programmable GPIOs. So there's bits of hardware, four of them hanging off the GPIOs that let you drive the GPIOs without any firmware, well at least not any ARM firmware intervention and um, I was thinking that might be in useful for interfacing to uh, displays or calculator buses and things like that to see if we can operate at higher frequencies without having to go to an FPGA. I'm not sure how well that's going to work but uh, things like the Ca uh, Casio 502P interface that I did might have been um, if not easier, um, able to operate at faster speeds using uh, that sort of hardware assist rather than doing the whole thing in firmware, which is what I did. And it was, I think the process was just about fast enough to do that. So uh, that's something I'm looking forward to having a go with on uh, some projects anyway. But uh, yeah, at the moment, that is the programmer setup that I've got and uh, seems to work pretty well. I might build a PCB because this is a little bit a little bit delicate in that you've got all these wires and things so uh, I might PCB up the double Pico setup so you've got a, a programming um, socket and then another Pico which is the, uh, the programmer because uh, yeah this will probably fall apart at some point and then you could have any number of these you could have four, you just have four PCBs rather than doing a double one, I'd probably just do a single. Maybe with some breakout stuff, some buttons and a display SD card, once that's on there. I mean that's useful for quite a few projects really. Might be the wrong form factor but the, the circuitry would be there, so I might might do that. But yeah, at the moment that seems to be my way out of Chippegeddon because these seem to be the chips They've started to become available, and um, the Picos, I managed to buy three of those and quite a few of these chips, so no problem at all with that. I think they're so new, they just haven't been built into sort of everything on the planet, and um, means at the moment, anyway, you can still buy them. 